So I've mentioned it offhand casually in a couple of the most, I guess the more recent videos, but uh, we sold the trailer right before we left LA on our last trip. You can see that video a couple videos back. But um, I want to make this video to kind of go over five reasons why we sold it. And this is also five reasons why you probably shouldn't buy an RV if you're thinking about it. So if these apply to you, um, you might want to hold off on buying an RV. Uh, I know most people don't listen to this. Uh, I didn't listen to people when they were telling me this uh, before I bought the RV. Um, in general, people don't listen to advice. So, but it might be interesting to you. So I'm gonna do this quickly, go through this so I can make this video kind of short. So the first reason we sold the RV, um, we were unable to store it here on our property. Um, that, there's a couple of reasons that's an issue. Um, one, we got the RV so we can kind of get up and go whenever like we wanted to go on a trip for a weekend. Um, so if it wasn't here at the house, that meant we had to drive somewhere, pick it up, either bring it here so we can load it or fill up the truck with everything we needed for the trip and then transfer it to the RV at the storage facility. Um, another problem is you're paying for storage. Uh, here in Seattle, storage prices are about like 150. If you're actually closer to Seattle proper, it's like 200 to 250 even up to like $500 a month for storage. So that adds up to like, it could be anywhere between like 5,000 to 10 to 15,000 over a five year period. So not being able to store it on your property is kind of a big deal. And also if you need to do maintenance of winterizing and things like that, um, if you don't have a place to work on it, you're gonna have to drive either to the storage place. Um, almost all of them don't allow you to do maintenance there. Uh, you can usually get around it, but it's usually not allowed. So um, you're kind of stuck taking it somewhere if you need it. To, like, to do work on it or something like that. So that was the first issue. We actually did get it in the driveway once. Uh, the problem was our street is so narrow, we can't get it in or out if there's any cars on the street. Um, and we live in an old neighborhood, like this house is over hundred years old and a lot of them are over hundred years old. And a lot of people don't have big driveways or they have no driveway at all. So people are parking on the street. So if there was anybody, anybody in the street, I had to go to all my neighbors, ask them to move in order for me to be able to get the uh, RV in and out. So. Uh, it was not realistic for us to store it here. Um, so right away after we got it in the first time, we realized that's not going to work out. So we ended up putting it in storage and that was about a half an hour away from our house. So first reason, if you don't have room for it on your property or maybe your friend or family property nearby, uh, that's a big no, no. That was the biggest uh, issue for us. Uh, the second reason was it actually limited our um, exploration. So I thought if we had RV, it would kind of give us a little bit more freedom. We would be able to explore more um, and get around more. Uh, and that ended up not really being the case. Um, as we were driving around, we had to do a lot of planning about where we were gonna stay. Uh, you can boondock off, kind of like off the roads and just pull off, um, but that's not, eh, it's not ideal. Um, the other problem is we like to randomly stop at small restaurants, coffee shops, like little places we find, little interesting, um, Places usually in small, like kind of country towns, or for visiting a city uh, somewhere in the downtown area, and there's almost never places to park at RV. Um, there was multiple times where we kind of got in weird positions because we pulled into a parking lot so we can eat, and then we couldn't get out of the parking lot just because how small the parking lot was and how it was maneuvering the um, RV around. So you can't just like uh, spur of the moment do things like you would if you just were driving around with the truck. And that's what we usually do is we just plan things. We don't really plan out. We have an idea we're going to a city or our area, and then we kind of just explore. Um, and you need to do a lot of planning when you're doing uh, RV stuff. So if you're not big into planning and you kind of like uh, more freedom when you're traveling, I would say that's a big, also a big no-no for um, uh, RV lifestyle and buying an RV. So uh, third reason was, uh, like third? third reason was uh, we found out cal like uh, RV campgrounds are not for us. Um, I kind of knew this going into it. Uh, I had expected that we'd do more boondocking. Um, my girlfriend, uh, Sylvia, uh, she, I, I thought we'd be doing more boondocking, but she's not really into it. Uh, we did kind of like a little bit of boondocking a couple times and um, she got just kind of creeped out about it because a lot of times it was like random forest roads or just random roads in the middle of Montana or Idaho. And um, it just wasn't working for her. So. We ended up going to campgrounds most of the time. And the problem with campgrounds is um, it just doesn't really feel like camping. You're, it feels almost like you're in a parking lot to us. I know some people really like it. Um, they work well as like kind of a base camp if you're just gonna 
drop you off there. That's what we did in Glacier National Park. We dropped off the RV and we kind of explored uh, Glacier National Park uh, for a couple of days. So that works, but um, uh, I really was more on the boondocking side and it ended up being that that wasn't something that uh, worked out for both of us. Um, the other issue is even though I like boondocking, a lot of times when we go boondocking, or I guess uh, dispersed camping, uh, is you're on forest roads, they're kind of rough. Um, they're also can be very narrow and um, anybody that's driven a trailer or anything like that, you kind of don't want to like just head uh, head first into like some unknown area. Um, you don't know if you're gonna drive down some forest road and it's gonna be knocked out by a tree or something, and then you're not gonna back a trailer out like three miles down a, a single lane uh, forest road. So um, I had imagined that we'd be able to drive down these forest roads and kind of find new little campsites, but um, just to avoid the risk of getting stuck, uh, we ended up not doing that. So. Yeah, so number three, we don't really like RV campgrounds so much. So that kind of, if you don't like that, yeah, you might want to think twice about uh, buying an RV. Um, fourth reason, which is even more relevant right now, um, gas prices are really like pretty, um, getting kind of crazy. And it will cut your MPG like in half um, easily. Uh, the Ranger I have now gets about eh, 20 to 23 miles per gallon. Uh, while towing, we're getting more like between 10 and 12, especially because they're, uh, um, hilly it is here and uh, I guess that's not much of an issue if you camp nearby but like I said we like to explore we go on pretty long road trips we went to Montana Utah um, LA Oregon Nevada um, Idaho the, just in the last uh, 12 months and that's pretty that's not out of the norm for us so I thought we'd be taking the RV on these trips but um, the gas prices would have just been insane and um, it's not just the gas prices but the range so we were only able to go about 100 to 150, 100 to 150 uh, miles between uh, tanks of gas, which is also a real pain in the ass when you're stopping every like, couple hours to fill up again. Um, so if you're worried about gas prices and you're planning on going kind of on longer drives to the places you want to camp at, um, again, RVs might not be for you. Um, and finally, the fifth reason, um, you might not want to buy an RV is that you don't like working on things. Um, yes, you can take your RV to a dealership or a service center. You can have someone uh, work on your RV for you, but you'll learn quickly that these break easily and they're not the most um, durable things. And there's, it's a house on wheels and it's a cheaply built house on wheels. Uh, so things break, uh, you're gonna have to do it yourself. If you're in the middle of nowhere, a mechanic's not gonna come out and do the work for you. So you're gonna have to do it yourself sometimes. And if you're not into that kind of handy stuff and working on things, then uh, you're just not gonna have a good time. And you might totally be screwed if, um, if you can't get someone to come help you. Like, it, you just don't have another option uh, sometimes. Uh, with us, it was an issue because I wanted to do a lot of the surface, like uh, servicing, the uh, winterization, uh, just general stuff. And I didn't have a place to work on it. So that kind of falls into the first uh, category. But even like we only did a handful of trips and um, uh, there was multiple times I had to open the full toolbox and crawl under something and kind of tie something, uh, re like rehook something on, something fell off, something came loose. Um, some finishing was coming off. Um, and this is an abnormal thing. Like if you look up uh, RV forms or anything, everybody is doing this. Um, there's no way of getting around it. Uh, so yeah, that was the five reasons we sold it um, and five reasons you might want to think twice about buying an RV. Um, what's nice is the market, you know, like nothing can stay on the lots right now. There's like huge supply issues. So we ended up selling the RV about not too much less than uh, what we bought it for. So it worked out for us, but um, thankfully the market's there and um, we got to try it out and we found out it was really wasn't for us. Uh, so in the next couple of videos, you're probably gonna see us do more tent camping again. Um, I'm gonna be doing some backpacking this year. Um, and it should be, uh, it should be fun. So um, I'm looking forward to kind of have a little bit more freedom now that we don't have the RV. And um, make sure to like, subscribe and check in so you can uh, go on those adventures with us and I'll see everybody later.